when we remove the pericardium, the heart is still covered by the serous pericardium, which has got two layers. Right. Inner one is called the visceral pericardium. It is intimately in touch with the surface of the heart and it develops with the heart. So it is a, becoming a part of it. And the wall of the heart is having the three layers, which is from inside to outside. The endocardium is the innermost. It is like the mucous membrane of the GIT. The middle one is myocardium. And outermost is the epicardium. So heart has got three layers. Epicardium, myocardium, and the endocardium. So the serous is touching the surface. And outer one is the Parietal layer or parietal pericardium, as we have done the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. So, these pleura and the pericardium they can be exemplified with the help of a balloon and a fist. If you push the fist in the balloon, then whichever part of the balloon is touching your fist, is the visceral. And the outer is called the parietal pleura or parietal perigot. And the space in between the two is called the pericardial cavity or pleural cavity. So this is the simple example, what is the visceral and what is the parietal. So visceral word we use for the organs, viscera means organs. In the abdomen there is a peritoneum, which is also visceral and peritoneum. So all are three because their development is from the same source. That is the intra-embryonic silo. Pleural, pericardial and the peritoneal they are from same source. And this cavity has got a very small amount of the fluid because both the lungs as well as the heart, they are the expansile organs. They move independently. So in order to prevent the friction between the pericardium and the heart, a little amount of the fluid is there, which glistens the surface, make it frictionless. Any disease in which some amount of the fluid increases, there are so many causes. Then it is called the pericardial or pleural effusion we word. So the fluid is accumulated in the dead space and this fluid will cause the external pressure on the organ. Because of the external pressure on the organ, the expansile nature of the organ is hindered. It is restricted and the function is also deteriorated, become less, lesser, maybe least and lead to the death. So that is the effect of the pleural effusion. In order to, if it is in the lungs, it causes the dyspnea. Dyspnea means difficulty in respiration. As in the heart or in the plural, in the pericardial effusion, it leads to the decreased cardiac output. The heart, what is the function of the heart? It is a pump. It is just receiving the pure blood from the lungs and it is throwing it to the each and every corner of the human body. That is the function of the heart. 
So it is a pump-like function. So whenever there is a fusion is there in the pericardium, cavity, so this output will be decreased. And decreased output will lead to the morbid state, illness, decreased physical function of a person because the blood is not received to each and every tissue of the body. All the organs, they do not work with the less amount of the blood thrown to them or supplied to them. So this will lead to the problem to the person. So this is how we define and explain the effusion and the pericardial or pleural cavity. So the heart is, when we remove, after removing it, the pericardium, either you cut it or it just reflect it upward. Now whatever you are seeing now, you are seeing the surface of the heart. It is still covered by the visceral pericardium. And the layer I am holding, its outer surface is fibrous pericardium, rough and tough. And inside is shining. It is glistening. It is the parietal pericardium. See the glistening nature. See the fibrous, lusterless, rough, tough, resilient, protective. So that is how we differentiate. It is the parietal, the visceral, and the fibrous pericardium. So after the removal, see I, I can hold all of the heart in my hand because of the fibrous pericardium. Why? Because of its superior attachment. Where it was? Really where the fibrous pericardium is attached? To the great vessels of the heart I have told you. Underline. You practice to write the notes in the classroom. Just sitting here and listening is not enough. Day one I have said that you have to make the notes of all the teachers of all the departments, all the subjects. It will give you practice for speed of the writing. In the exam it will help. The speed practice cannot be done. Remove the pericardium. We see the actual surface of the heart still covered by the transparent visceral pericardium. So how to exactly make the diagram? Everybody take full page of your copy. Full page and one pen. And all colored pencils with you. Make a round one. You need to make, everybody can make. Blue pencil. Blue. A little bit vertical line and slightly oblique <coughs> convex. Then again, parallel with it, again vertical. Again curved, same. Again a little bit vertical. This is the right border of the heart. Now we are doing the morphology, external features means morphology of the heart. The shape, size, surfaces, borders. So you have made a right border of the heart. Who is making the right border of the heart? Superior vena cava, right atrium and inferior vena cava. So you have made three things. This inferior vena cava has pierced the diaphragm. There is a hole in the diaphragm on the right side of the midline through which the inferior vena cava comes to be opened in the right atrium. Then make a horizontal line.
original plan. Now what this line depicts? Right ventricle. Is it right ventricle or is it also called anterior or inferior border of the heart? Anterior or inferior. Because whatever is the anterior is the inferior also. So we use the two words together, anterior or inferior. Then this completes this line of the superior vena cava, which brings the inferior blood from the upper half of the body. Then from this line, make a conical serrated margin structure. Conical and serrated, like this saw. Serrated word view. Serrated margins of the both the side. What is this conical structure? It is a spongy part of right atrium that is called right auricle. There is a difference between right atrium and right. This is right atrium and right border. So this is called the conical spongy part, primitive part of the developmental embryological development. So this is called the right auricle. Why is it called auricle? Auricle word means it resembles the auricle means lobule of the ear, not whole of the ear. Auricle means external pinna or ear is called auricle. It resembles not auricle, all of the auricle, only the lobule part of the auricle, lower one. See the Mahatma Buddha statue. The lobule is quite long. So it is a conical part. And see exactly in texture also. Press it, your lobule. It is spongy, soft. Same is auricle. Right auricle is also soft and spongy. It is a vestigial part. It doesn't take part in the contraction because there is no cardiac muscle in it. Only honeycomb appearance if you cut it. Pockets, tissue. No cardiac, no myocardium. Then, where it ends? Make a line down. Made this period. Vertical line. Now this line depicts a right atrioventricular sulcus. A right atrioventricular sulcus because this is ventricle. This is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle. The lower one this. So you have almost make the half of the heart. You practice it 10 times, 50 times today, then it will be frequent. Any question of the heart comes, this is the basic diagram you have to make. We call sternocostal, we are making the sternocostal surface of the heart, or anterior aspect or the sternocostal. Sternocostal surface means which lies behind the sternum and the costal cartilages and ribs. That is the anterior view. This is the anatomical position of the heart. This is the anatomy. So the anatomy people will always make the heart in the anatomical position, and you should know how to draw it. All questions will be of the heart in the theory as well as the practical will be in anatomical. First, you have to hold the heart in the anatomy. Then everything you have to. So this is the right ventricle. See, it is broad from below. And this line which separates right atrium with the right ventricle will be called right atrioventricular sulcus. Sulcus is a line. So God has already drawn an external line which can make us to see on the 
right side of this line is the right atrium, on left side of this line is the right ventricle. Right Already line is there. You have to identify, we will provide you the heart in the Monday in the D hall. You have to exactly confirm each and everything I am teaching you today. That is the way to thought of the NR. So now the right ventricle is a left chamber. It is brought from below. As we are going upward, it is becoming narrow. This upper narrow part of the right ventricle has got a name. It is called in fundibulum. From here to here, this is in fundibulum. Again, Greek word in fundibulum means narrow part. Narrow passage or pathway somewhere. So this is called in fundibulum it is only present in the right ventricle, not in the left. So where the infundibulum ends? Just above it. La is the root of the pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk, this is pulmonary trunk. And pulmonary trunk, you know, it divides into right and left pulmonary arteries. And why they are blue? You know why the pulmonary arteries are blue? They are the only arteries which are blue colored in the whole of your human body. So this is the pulmonary trunk divided into right and left. Pulmonary artery is ready to go into the hilum of the lung. And they occupy the upper part of the hilum. Upper part of the hilum. Lower part of the hilum that is called the pulmonary ligament. Which is a misnomer. It is not a ligament of the joints. It is a misnomer. It contains pulmonary veins. Why pulmonary ligament is there? What is the function of pulmonary ligament? It is made up of pulmonary veins and the loose areolar tissues. No bronchi, no arteries, no lymph nodes are found. Only loose areolar tissue and pulmonary veins are there because they want the expansion. So pulmonary ligament gives the dead space for the expansion of the pulmonary vein so that more and more blood should come from the lungs. And they expand enormously because they will now have to throw this oxygenated blood into the heart, into the left atrium. So this is the purpose of pulmonary. If these pulmonary veins would have been in the upper part, near the principal bronchus. Now the hardest thing in the hilum of the lung when you feel with the thumb. So there are so many structures are present in the hilum. Pulmonary veins, two or three, pulmonary arteries, two or three bronchus are there. You can't differentiate this is the pulmonary vein or artery. How to differentiate? Bronchus is also round. Veins are also round. Arteries are also round. Then you have to feel with the thumb. When you press the high level thumb, the hardest thing feel in your, below your skin of your thumb is the principal bronchus because it is covered by and all the vessels around it will be the pulmonary arteries. Go downward in the pulmonary veins. Any vessel you see there, you can say that they are pulmonary veins. So this is how to Identify in the examination, in the practical examination, this is. So if the veins would have been in the upper part, the bronchus, the cartilage of the bronchus won't allow the veins to expand. And less blood has to go into the heart, less output and less. So that is the simple logic. Then lymph nodes are present around the bronchus. They surround them. 
in the primary and secondary and tertiary also. They are all surrounded, they are wrapped by the blind tubules of the lymphatics and lymph nodes. And these lymph nodes, they are connected to the lymph nodes of the hilum. Lymph nodes in the hilum, they are called hilar lymph nodes. Underline, it is not given in your book. Hilar lymph node. And these hilar lymph nodes, they are always enlarged. Because each and every day, so many spores of the bacteria enter into our lungs, into our nose, larynx, trachea, bronchioles. Dust particles, carbogenous particle, not carbon, carbogenous, underline it. Car don't say carbon is entering into our lungs, carbon is an atom. Carbogenous are the or chemicals which are rich in carbon moiety. So, so many dust particles and carbogenous particles and this force of bacteria, they enter into every day in our... So, wherever there is the entry of these uh, unwanted uh, disease-causing organisms, there is a full-fledged lymphatic system is there around it. So, lymph nodes, they are enlarged. If they are normal in size, if they are normal, what is their size? About 2 to 3 mm. And when they get enlarged due to disease or normally also, in the case of the lungs, in the hilum, they are already enlarged every day. They are almost the size of almond or blackberry, jamun. See that jamun can press the bronchus? No, because it is surrounded by cartilage. The large and large blackberry-like lymph node will press. What will it will press? Pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins. This is the region. So all the pulmonary veins has been pushed down into the pulmonary ligament, so there should be no any hindrance in its expansion and getting the blood and flowing. So whenever a normal X-ray is seen, the hilar lymph nodes they are present around the hilum of the both the lungs and they are white in color. If patient is suffering from bronchitis or bronchial asthma or other diseases causing organisms, they must much enlarge. But normally even, they are enlarged like the size of the pea. So they are quite white color, you know, opaque in the X-ray. So hilar shadows, they are called in the X-ray findings, they are called the hilar shadows. Underline. Hilar shadows are the enlarged, normal, lymph nodes in the hilum. They are normal. Because they are already because of the air pollution. Every day dust particle in there. So their finding is normal. We don't take it as a serious. But if they are alert too much, then we become alert that it may be underlying some disease of the lung. So that is the importance of this. So this is a pulmonary trunk divided into right and left pulmonary arteries. Then pick up the pink color pencil. Pink color pencil. Never use a red color in your answer. Red inferior part is not only formed by the right ventricle. Next is the right left ventricle and apex and then the upper part. So this is, I will make the left ventricle. Only this much has, is seen because heart is obliquely placed. All of the left ventricle surface has gone on the left side. So it is twisted like this. So if the apex would have been in the midline, 
So the right and left ventricle would have been same size from the midline. But it is oblique. So apex has come. This is the apex. And where it lies is the apex. Nine point five centimeter from midline. Here it lies in the fifth intercostal space. Again, important to note, underline fifth intercostal space. Internal thoracic artery was bifurcated at the which intercostal space? So never confuse. That is six. This is fifth. Ninety percent student fail. They always say six and fifth. Bifurcation, fifth, to so underline it. So that is the apex of the heart. And this apex of the heart is conical. And exactly because of the apex, where lies the base of the heart? Always appears it to the apex. Not in the heart, in anywhere in the anatomy will be. So many apex and bases will come. So we have taken the heart like the Egypt pyramid. This base, this is the apex. Now throw this pyramid in such a way that the apex should lie 9.5 cm from it line. That is the anatomical vision of the heart. Apex is not in the midline. It is obliquely placed and lies on the left side. Even it, it was erect, pyramid, base was opposite the apex. Even if we have thrown it, plus we have shifted it on the left side, even then, base always lies opposite the apex. That is the rule. So where is the base of the heart? 90% of the students say this is the base. No. This is the <laughs> diaphragmatic surface of the heart or inferior surface of the heart. This, which is resting on the diaphragm. This is inferior or diaphragmatic surface. This is the apex. Where would lie the base? Yes. This, this is the base. Opposite the apex. And who formed the base? Left atrium, underline. Base of the heart is formed by left atrium, having two right and two left pulmonary veins opening into it. Two pulmonary veins opening. So like right ventricle, left ventricle was also very broad from below. But as we are approaching upward, it is also becoming narrow. Now here again we name it. For left ventricle, the upper narrow part is called aortic vestibule. This narrow part is aortic vestibule. Again, vestibule means a narrow vest, a narrow that like the uh, you stick in tube. It also went a vestibule, then vestibule of the internal ear, bony labyrinth, membranous labyrinth, vestibule, sacule, semicircular canal, you know, the so vestibule word. The aortic vestibule. And the, on the summit of it, what starts? The largest artery of the human body, that is the ascending aorta. Like from here, starting the pulmonary trunk, at the summit of the left ventricle, right ventricle, at the apex of the left ventricle, start the aorta. And aorta lies behind the pulmonary trunk, so we show by the dot. So it is a little complicated, but you have to exactly make it. So 
So both the permanent trunk and the aorta, they twist like this. Permanent trunk lies anteriorly and the aorta lies obliquely and posteriorly. Like the two fingers you do like this. When you do like this, when you do like the two fingers, yes. So exactly to the development, you will see that these two fingers, they are like this. Permanent trunk anteriorly and behind the aorta. You never make like this, no. We will make like this, parallel, we will get zero mark. This is the exit. One behind the other. Totally hindering the aorta from the pulmonary trunk. So starting of the pulmonary aorta, larger artery is called the ascending aorta. Then at the level of the sternal angle or at the level of the T4, it converted to its guard, arc of the aorta. Which go upward and then again descend downward from the sternal angle. Now this is called descending aorta, with the arc of the aorta. So that is the exit. Now this line, again, externally present. You can see it very well. God has made a line separating the left ventricle from right ventricle. What you will name it as? Inter anterior interventricular sulcus. Called anterior interventricular sulcus of the line. Then because of the obliquely placed heart, the left atrium has gone backside. And it has become base. And only a small part is visible here. This is the left auricle, like the conical part, this is called the left auricle. Left auricle is also visible, a little bit, but whole of the left atrium has gone back because of the oblique position of the heart. So this, from the apex up to the root of the inferior vena cava is the inferior or the anterior border. Then from the right border up to this line of the left ventricle is called sternocostal or the anterior surface of the heart. Anatomical anterior surface. It includes anterior, right ventricle, atrium, right ventricle, a part of left ventricle. And this line depicts the left border of the heart. Left border of the heart is formed by left ventricle, left auricle, and the aortic knuckle. Arc of the aorta, the left, where it is becoming the descending thoracic aorta is called the aortic knuckle. In X-ray also we found the aortic knuckle forming the, contributing in the left border of the heart. So this way. So at the root of the aorta and the root of the pulmonary trunk and a right atrioventricular sulcus. This line I am showing with the white color. The root of the aorta, root of the pulmonary trunk and the right atrioventricular sulcus is called coronary sulcus. A special name is given. Coronary sulcus. And it is circumferential. It is circumferential, it is a hole around the hole of the heart. Coronary sulcus. Now this is the anterior vessel. Now, like the Egypt pyramid, now we will throw the heart. Because we want to see the base. How you can make the anterior costal surface is easy to make. See how you can make it on the diaphragmatic surface and the base of the heart together. So when we throw it, 
posteriorly or when the heart is like this, anterior posterior, and now this is the this is the back side. So this diagram you have to show, where you can show the diaphragmatic surface as well as the base of the heart together. So when we throw the heart opposite way, see what is the position now. The pink line, the blue line, same, but how only different. So this outline you should know how we are made. The heart was in the anatomical vision, obliquely placed. It was left. And this was the right duty. Now you have done like this. You just invert it. Because you want to see the diaphragmatic surface and the base. So what was on the right side has come opposite. What was on the right side, now it is on the left side. So for the heart, we use the word right and left more appropriate terms than lateral and medial. So I have reverted the heart like this. Or just I have rotated like this. Is it clear? Just we want to see what lies back side. For that you have to rotate the heart exactly in the anatomical position without changing the apex and anything. Then which picture you will get this. So in the exam it comes, draw and label the inferior or the posterior surface of the heart, then this diagram is essential. So make these two in separate page, because it is a little bit complicated, it was easy. But this diagram is very, very important, will come so many questions. So this was the outline I have drawn from here. So drawing the outline is now, now you will fill it inside. From the apex, straight line, key point. So this line is the coronary circle. This. Circumferential, starting from the here, comes here, and where this point lies? Here. Is it clear? Same. Coronary sulcus reaches here. And where this point? I leave. So this is the coronary sulcus are wrong. Starting from the same point, reaching at the same point. These two diagrams, they will tell you where the coronary sulcus starts and where it ends. Then, this is left ventricle, this is right ventricle. This is the right atrium. This surface, we are seeing, this is the front surface, anterior surface of right atrium. This is the posterior surface, back side. Then, The left atrium. Pink means oxygenated blood. Blue means deoxygenated blood. This is left atrium with the two right and two left pulmonary veins opening it, cooling the pure blood coming from the hilum of the both the lungs, right and left. So that is the cooling. So this chamber is left atrium. Seen only when you see the back side. Then this is the left. So what is this line you will say? What is the name of this line you will say? This is posterior interventricular. This was anterior. This was anterior interventricular sulcus because it lies on the anterior surface. That is in the 
food cereal and what is the shade important in making shade? This diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the lung. Triangular, lower one. Diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Is it resting on? Diaphragm. Whichever portion is touching below is the diaphragmatic surface. It is triangular when we see that. And this T point, what is from this line to this side? What do you will name this line? Left atrium, right ventricle. Left atrium, left ventricle. What this line will we'll say? Posterior atrioventricular surface. This part, anterior. Atrioventricular surface. This was anterior. Now this is posterior atrioventricular surface. Common to both the right and left ventricle. Atrium is single. And what is the other name? Same. Anterior ventricular surface. Yes. So coronary surface is made by posterior and the anterior atrioventricular surface. Anterior ventricular 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 surface. So these are small terms, but they are very, very important. If you have to become a cardiologist sometime, yeah, you should know each and every detail. So you have to explain to the examiner, uh, to the patient, the relative, what is sulcus, what is coron sulcus, what is the important. Is it clear? So that is, and this key point, where the posterior interventricular sulcus intersect with the atrioventricular posterior interventricular sulcus, so this point is very important, it's called crux. This is the crux point of the heart. Crux. And its clinical value we will do later on. So this is how exactly you have to form what is called the external features of the heart. 